Gellin Lane started collecting barbed wire in 1965 with the help of his brother-in-law. I was over there on our home place one time and found some very unusual looking wire and kind of got me interested in it. And I realized at that time there were people that were collecting wire and there was even an association of barbed wire collectors in Texas. And so I joined the association and started collecting. And 269 wires later, he was ready to retire from collecting and pass along his finds to someone with an interest in the subject. The Department of Rangeland and Ecology Management at Texas A&M University fit the profile, and Lane happily handed over his collection for display. That's what I was looking for, somebody that really had an interest in it and would like to have it. And you know, uh, people, not everybody's interested in barbed wire collections, you know, that's just not, that don't go with the fine arts in some places. We're excited. Uh, this is a, a great find, is all the agricultural uh, sciences that uh, come through our department will have an opportunity to, to uh, view the wire. The Merryweather is Lane's oldest piece it's called Snake Ribbon, dating to 1853. By the 1870s, wire had become a part of the land, but initially not everyone liked it. Some people didn't like it a little bit and proceeded to immediately cut it and that some trouble ensued, but over time it settled down and it became accepted that there was not going to be any more free and open range. But it changed the whole aspect of, of grazing livestock on western rangelands. Over the next century, there was a barbed wire boom in which most of Lane's collection was invented and patented. During that time, various wires were used in livestock operations and were modified into the barbed wire we commonly see today. Reporting from College Station, Texas, I'm Jennifer Rieger.